This is our standard setup uh, for most patients with the patient fully supine and on a standard intubating pillow. This one's pink. Of course, they come in a lot of different colors and a lot of different shapes. But this is the standard setup with a, an average size person, perhaps even uh, an average size like myself. But notice for our model patient here, Quinton, uh, a, a larger man, 6'3", 6'4", a little over 300 pounds. Notice that the imaginary line from the ear, the external auditory meatus, to the suprasternal notch, notice that that line is an acute angle. If the imaginary line from the ear to the suprasternal notch is more horizontal, the three airway axes will start to line up the weight of the abdomen is falling away from the diaphragm and the patient will breathe better. All of our anesthesia educators are saying don't start from a fully supine position for a larger patient, an OSA patient, um, or a, a morbidly obese patient. Don't start from this position because all the mechanical forces are against you. They're working against you. What we want to do is start from a ramped position. Over the years, I've heard people say, well, just put the backup control. That's all you need to do is adjust the backup control. So that's what I've done right now, more of a head up position, but notice the imaginary line from the ear to the suprasternal notch has not changed. We haven't altered the angles, the airway axes at all. So, and, and what we've done is move the larger patient's airway, head and neck up and away from you the anesthesia provider, now you're having to lean forward, you're putting a stress on your own back and making things worse for you to take care of that patient without actually helping to improve the first pass or first pass attempt at successful intubation. Okay, so what we've done here is shown what has been taught at most anesthesia colleges across the United States and Canada. And that is something that's been referred to at all, my alma mater, UT Southwestern in Dallas or Parkland Hospital, and that is the blessing of the blankets, or make a ramp out of a stack of blankets. So you go to the blanket warmers, you get yourself several blankets and make yourself a ramp. So here we have Quinton on the ramp with a standard uh, intubating pillow or standard head cradle. And notice that Quinton, we're starting to have a better view of Quinton's head and neck. Notice that the imaginary line from the ear to the suprasternal notch is now far more of a, uh, a line that is parallel to the OR table or parallel to the floor, and that the airway axes in that position are starting to line up. So with slight extension of Quinton's head and neck, we start to see the three airway axes are lining up, the weight of the abdomen's falling away from the, uh, from the patient's diaphragm. It's easier for the patient to breathe and it's much easier for us, the anesthesia people, working with that patient's airway to uh, mo both mask ventilate for the patient but also improve the first pass uh, or successful intubation rate if you have this patient properly positioned. Blankets work, but they take too much time. And as patients are getting ever more large, the number of blankets increases dramatically, and you end up with a very unstable platform.